Hi, I'm Eric Siegel with Eric'sTrains.com, and today we are going to take a look at the Ugly Duckling. This is the three rail O scale EMD BL2 diesel from MTH. Okay, so let's start things off with a little bit of history on the real BL2. The BL2 was a four-axle road switcher that was built by the Electromotive Division of General Motors between 1947 and 1949. The BL in the name stood for Branch Line, as these engines were originally intended to be used on remote branch lines for light road and switching duties. A total of 59 BL2s were produced, the CNO was the biggest buyer of the BL2. They had 14 of these. Now, the BL2s were somewhat unattractive when compared to the sleek cab units of the day, and because of that, they got the nickname of Ugly Duckling. But despite the weird looks, the BL2 was actually a very important locomotive because it was a test bed for a lot of features and technologies that would be used on later diesels, like the legendary GP series that would follow. When compared to a cab diesel, the BL2 had much better visibility because of these angled sides, and it also had walkways on the ends for better accessibility, so it was designed to be a much more versatile locomotive. It could be used as a road engine, but because of the increased visibility and the walkways, it could also be a very capable switcher in the yard. So it was sort of a stepping stone in the evolution of the diesel locomotive from the streamlined cab units to the more utilitarian looking diesels that we have today but because it was sort of in the middle between the two it kind of ended up being a cross between a cab diesel like an FT diesel a road switcher like an RS1 and then it also had just a hint of the GG1 thrown in there with these angled sides it's a really cool locomotive but back then it was sort of ahead of its time and so it didn't do very well and that's why they only sold 59 of these but fortunately, there are at least half a dozen BL2s remaining in preservation today, and a few of them are still operational. Okay, that does it for the brief historical overview of the BL2. Now let's talk about the MTH rendition that we have here. Now, this is not the first time that MTH has done the BL2, but this latest rendition was offered in the 2017 Volume 1 MTH catalog, and they did six road names. They did the Rock Island, the CNO, the Florida East Coast, the Chicago and Eastern Illinois, Western Maryland, and of course, Boston and Maine. Let's go over some specs on this model. The length is right at 14 and a quarter inches. The weight is three pounds, 15 ounces. This engine has right at one pound, 10 ounces of pulling power. And the minimum required curve to operate this engine is 031. This engine is protoscale 3.2 capable. That means that even though this is a three rail model right now, it can be converted for two rail operation if you choose to do so. Now on the inside of the engine, there are two flywheel motors, one per truck. There's a fan driven smoke unit for the smokestack. And this engine is also equipped with Protosound 3.0 with the MTH digital command system. And it also has a built in DCC decoder as well. As is typical for most MTH engines these days, there are three ways to operate this engine. The preferred method, of course, is to use MTH's digital command system, as that will give you access to all of the engine's advanced features. However, you can also run this engine conventionally with just a transformer and some track, or if you plan to operate this engine as a two-rail model, you can run it with DCC. As we zoom in, here's a look at the front pilot area of the BL2. Now, I've got the plow attachment attached right now. This is packaged separately with the engine when you buy it, and you attach it with a couple of screws on the underside of the pilot. But behind the plow, we've got some separately applied MU hoses. There's a coupler cut bar back here. We've got some nice step detail on the sides of the pilot. We've got this great handrail detailing on the front, and there's some on the back as well. And there's a metal safety chain here in the middle. And then, of course, right here, we've got the protocoupler that can be thrown from the DCS remote. Moving up, here's one of my favorite spots on this model because of this really cool logo. Now, of course, the logo on your engine will depend on what road name you order, but nonetheless, I think this is really cool. Now, behind that logo is a molded-in door, and I think 
the door might open, but it doesn't want to open very easily, so I'm not going to tempt fate by trying to open it any more than I already have. We've got safety tread on the walkways down here. There's an operating headlight here in the middle. We've got operating marker lights on the corners, as well as lighted number boards. Up on top of the hood, we've got some nice rivet detailing and an add-on horn. And then on the windows, we've got add-on windshield wipers. As we swing around the side, you can see we've got some nicely detailed truck side frames. And then there's a ladder coming off the truck that leads up to the cab area. And as we move up toward the cab, we've got a tiny legible builder's plate right here. We've got excellent rivet detailing all down the sides. I love these swooping sides here on the front. And again, this was done to give the crew better visibility out of the cab. And then we've got a ladder here going up toward the cab. We've got two separately applied grab irons. The doors of the cab open up and they are sprung. So they'll snap back like that. The cab windows have clear plastic inserts in them, except for this window, which is open. And then on the inside of the cab, there are two hand-painted crew figures. There's a light on the inside of the cab, and that light does turn off when the engine starts moving. In the middle here, we've got a nicely detailed fuel tank area. There's a legible placard right here, and then we've got some hand-painted details going on. And then, of course, right here, we've got this beautiful B&M Herald. Moving up, here we've got one of the windows on the back of the cab, and it also has a clear plastic insert in it. And it's kind of a cool looking back window. It's not exactly square, is it? Then we've got these nice see-through metal screens here, and we've also got some molded in vent detailing going down the side of the engine. And then of course we've got these beautiful sweeping side angles going down toward the rear of the engine. It's really cool. Toward the back, we've got a lot of stuff we had on the front of the engine. We've got lighted number boards, operating marker lights, there's an operating backup light here. We've got some separately applied metal grab irons going up the back right here. And then we've got the metal handrails, and of course there is safety tread on the deck. And then of course here's the rear pilot, and since there's no plow attachment back here, you can now see some of the details I was talking about on the front pilot. And then we've got the rear protocoupler here, and that can also be fired from the DCS remote. There's not a whole lot to see on the roof of the BL2, but what there is is kind of here in the middle. Now on the outskirts, of course, we've got these separately applied metal lift rings all over the place. But here in the middle, we've got some fans with separately applied fan blades on the inside. And then we've got two smokestacks for the fan-driven smoke unit to put smoke out of. And as always, if you want to load smoke fluid into the smoke unit, you simply pour the smoke fluid directly down the stack. And then finally, we've got a second horn that's attached right there. Here's a quick look down the other side of the BL2. Now, except for the horn up here that I just showed you a second ago, it's pretty much identical to the other side. Here's a look at the underside of the BL2. We've got two pickup rollers per truck for a total of four. There are two traction tires on the inner axle of each truck for a total of four. The speaker for the sound system is right here. There's a master control knob for the smoke volume here. There's a master control knob for the audio volume right here. Right here, there's a switch to toggle between three rail and two rail operation. And then right here, there's a switch to toggle between DCS and DCC operation. All right, the last thing we're gonna do before we start this thing up is BFIMO, best feature in my opinion. Well, my favorite feature on the BL2 has to be these cutaways on the sides of the engine that were done to give the crews better visibility. You know, I think when these engines were first made back in the day, these cutaways were one of the reasons why it was sort of seen as an ugly looking engine. But over time, I think it's proven to be just the opposite. This is a really cool looking engine. And in fact, when I first got it, I had the same initial reaction that they probably had back then. I thought this was a weird looking engine. But as I've operated it and continue to look at it over time, I've really started to appreciate that it has a very unique beauty that sets it apart from other diesels out there. All right, now comes the fun part. Let's go ahead and start this thing up. Now, ordinarily, when I review an engine, after I start it up, I will demonstrate some of the sounds, but I'm not gonna do that this time because while I'm running the engine, you're gonna hear most of the sounds anyway. So when I start the engine up, I'm just gonna go ahead and move it out. 
Now, I need to apologize about the caboose because right now I do not have a Boston and Maine caboose. So for the time being, I'm just running it with a Pensy caboose. Anyway, let's go ahead and start it up.
right, that about wraps it up for this review. This is a very cool little engine. Like I said, I've always been attracted to oddball engines, and this one certainly fits into that category, so I'm really glad that I picked one up. Now, if you're interested in purchasing one of these, the retail price is right at $500, although keep in mind that if you go through a good MTH dealer, you should be able to get a little bit of a discount off that retail price. And as always, if you're looking for a good MTH dealer, try my favorite train store, which is Legacy Station. You can find them on the web at www.legacystation.com or give them a call at 770-339-7780. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Eric Siegel, and I'll see you next time. To discuss this model or any other O-Gage trains and to meet other O-Gage modelers, check out the O-Gage Railroading Magazine online forum at ogrforum.ogagerr.com.